Every year during the dry season in the tropics, fires destroy large swathes of forest and shrub areas. What was once lush and vibrant landscape is transformed into a smoldering, ash-covered canvas of black and grey. In this feature, we examine forest fires and their impact on the environment and mankind. Annually, forest fires are responsible for burning millions of acres worldwide. The deadliest forest fire ever recorded was the 1871 Peshtigo Fire in Wisconsin, USA. 1.2 million acres of land were destroyed and an estimated 1,200 to 2,500 persons were killed. In October 2007, forest fires in California destroyed 1,500 homes and over half a million acres of land. Half a million people also had to be evacuated. Forest fires in Australia in 2009 killed 181 people and gutted 750 houses. 865,000 acres of forest were destroyed and whole towns were obliterated. Losses amounted to over 325 million US dollars. These fires were the worst in Australia's history. In 1987, Trinidad experienced one of its worst forest fire seasons. Approximately 52,930 acres of land were burnt, resulting in severe damage to natural forests and agricultural lands, costing the country millions of dollars in damage. In the Caribbean, fires may consume fuel such as grass, shrubs and small weedy vegetation, and may take place on roadsides and vacant lots. These are known as brush or brush fires and may develop into forest fires, which are uncontained and free-spreading combustion that consumes the natural fuels of forests. Such fires are usually seen raging on hillsides. In other countries of the world, bush or brush fires and forest fires are referred to as wildfires. Well, we experience both bush fires and forest fires or wildfires because the first areas that traditionally burn would be the open lots and the roadsides. In many instances, these fires then spread onto adjoining forested areas or you have forest fires starting in the forest itself because people are in there for one reason or the other. Forest fires have both natural and man-made causes. Few occur naturally as a result of lightning and volcanic activity. In the Caribbean, forest fires are mainly man-made. Whenever we investigate a forest fire, we usually find some evidence of human presence, some human activity. So we have no evidence to suggest that our fires are due to any other cause other than some human activity. These actions can be the result of negligence, such as poorly discarded cigarette butts and matches, improperly extinguished campfires, and burning debris or garbage. Some causes can also be deliberate, as in the case of arson, clearing land for development, and most commonly, slash and burn agricultural practices. The three main elements required for a fire to start are oxygen, fuel, and heat. These elements form what is known as the fire triangle. If one of these elements is missing, fire will not exist. Firefighters, therefore, attempt to control fires by trying to remove at least one of these elements. Regardless of how fires are started, how they spread depends largely on natural conditions, fuel, weather, and topography. Depending on these factors, a fire can quickly fizzle or turn into a raging blaze. Fewer may comprise dry grass and leaves, twigs and other dead brush, large logs or stumps and even buildings. A small amount of fuel will cause a fire to burn and spread slowly with a low intensity. If there is a lot of fuel, the fire will burn more intensely causing it to spread faster. The dryness of the fuel also allows faster combustion. Weather also plays a major role in a forest fire. There are three weather elements that can affect forest fires. Temperature, 
wind and moisture. The potential for a fire to start may also be influenced by temperature. Warmer temperatures dry out fuels faster, thereby allowing fires to ignite and spread easily. Wind probably has the biggest impact on a forest fire's behavior. It is also the most unpredictable and uncontrollable factor. Wind supplies the fire with additional oxygen, dries out more material, creating more available fuel, and it pushes the fire across the land at a faster rate. While wind can help the fire to spread, moisture works against the fire. Moisture, in the form of rain and humidity, can slow the fire down and reduce its intensity. On the other hand, lack of moisture or drought creates extremely favorable conditions for wildfires. The third big influence on the spread of forest fires is the shape of the land or the topography. The slope of the land is critical. Fires usually travel much faster uphill than downhill and the steeper the slope, the faster the fire will travel. This is because the fire is able to preheat the fuel further up the hill because the smoke and heat are rising in that direction. Conversely, once the fire has reached the top of the hill, it will struggle to come back down because it is not able to preheat the downhill fuel. What is lost by these annual forest fires? Forest fires are very costly to both humans and the environment. In addition to putting lives at risk, forest fires cause vast economic loss from damage to properties, agricultural lands and infrastructure such as utility poles, bridges and roads. From the standpoint of the environment, there is tremendous loss of biodiversity from the burning of natural forests. Plants and animals may be killed directly by these fires. Vegetation also suffers as fires strip soils of their nutrients by changing their chemistry and structure. And even if animals manage to escape a fire, vegetation is still destroyed, depleting animals' food supply and habitats. In many instances, Invasive species may subsequently overtake these environments, causing harm both ecologically and economically. The destruction of vegetation can also lead to further problems such as erosion, flooding and landslides. In addition, the tremendous amount of smoke and ash generated by forest fires, as well as the dust from land made bare, pollutes the air that we breathe sometimes resulting in various respiratory ailments. In the current setting, with a lot of emphasis on global issues such as climate change, carbon sequestration, biodiversity conservation, all these things have forest and forest management at the core. Forests can contribute a lot to mitigating the impacts of global warming. So therefore, we need to do whatever we can to protect those areas of forest that we have. Especially in the Caribbean, we are island states, essentially small island states are that, and we can be very severely impacted on by some of these concerns, global warming, sea level rise. And therefore, our forests can play a vital role in safeguarding our lives and livelihoods. As part of a forest fire prevention plan, Forestry personnel in the Caribbean monitor forests through patrols or fire spotter towers. They are also responsible for implementing fire breaks or traces to prevent the spread of forest fires and for restoring bent forests. In the forested setting, there are very limited opportunities to use high-powered and motorized pumps and so on. So in a lot of situations, you're using hand tools either to separate fuel, unburned fuel from the burning fire front or where the fire is not burning so intensively to smother out the flames using a fire beater. Or in, some, in many cases, we have to attack the fire indirectly by clearing a line to allow the fire to burn up to that line and therefore make it easier for ground personnel to put it out. So it's a matter of either removing the fuel or eliminating oxygen by smothering out the 
fires. Individual citizens also play an important role in preventing forest fires. Here are some do's and don'ts. Don't throw out lit cigarettes or matches. Don't burn garbage or other debris in vegetated areas. Don't burn during periods of high winds or when very hot and dry. Do report forest fires immediately to your local fire service or forestry division. Do compost organic waste instead of burning. Not only does this reduce the risk of spreading fires, but decomposed litter makes an excellent fertilizer. Do employ proper agri- with trees and shrubs instead of harmful practices like slash and burn. Do obtain a fire permit during the fire season, December 1st to June 30th, and follow the necessary guidelines in cases where outdoor burning is required. In closing, please remember that although forest fires are sometimes categorized as natural hazards, humans are often directly responsible for their occurrences, particularly in the Caribbean region. Fires are very dangerous and can get out of control in minutes, but proper practices and caution on our part can reduce the catastrophic effects of forest fires on ourselves and our environment. Thank you.